what was Lamar on? Like, it, aside from him, this was a more attractive and energetic cast. This was a good group that they put together. Let's talk about it and let's meet them right after this. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. We are back for Ready to Love. This is Season 9, Episode 2. Let me see what it was called. The Good, Bad, and Freaky. Okay? If you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up the video. If you don't do anything else, thumbs up the video. And then leave some comments down below. So tonight we meet the second grouping of the show. 10 more singles, six ladies, four guys this time, which was supposed to counterpart um, what we met last week, where it was supposed to be six guys and four ladies. So let's, let's meet these people, all right? Let me make this a little bigger on the screen for you guys. All right, so we'll start with the ladies first, down at the bottom. So starting on, well, my left, I don't know if it's going to flip on the screen, but starting on my left at the bottom in the lime green, we have Maya. Maya is a 31 year old healthcare IT consultant. Next to her, we have Rashina, who sounds like Vernicia from Houston, but we have Rashina, who is a 39 hairstylist and salon owner. Next to her in the blue, which was a really pretty color blue, next to her in the blue, we have Patricia. Patricia, where's your bio, sis? Did they not give Patricia a bio? I can't find it. Mm, mm, mm. Patricia doesn't have a bio on the Today Show. That's unfortunate. Um... So I, I don't remember how old she is. I think I have it in the notes, in my notes somewhere. Next to her in the green, we have Laylin. Next to her in the turquoise, we have Vanessa. Vanessa's a trip, y'all. We're going to talk about Vanessa in a moment. Because Vanessa, we're going to talk about Vanessa in a moment. But Vanessa gives me, I want to prove my blackness vibes. And then next to Vanessa in the pink on the far end with the blonde braids is Patrice. Patrice is 43 and she owns a transportation company. She says she drives around uh, celebrities. So as far as the gentleman, up top we have Lamar in the little print that he has on, the black and brown pattern shirt. Next to him we have Chaz. In the black, we have Jonathan. Jonathan is fine. Jonathan is fine. When people say, when ladies say we want a tall, dark, and handsome man, we want we want Jonathan. <laughs> we want Jonathan. And then finally is Alonzo, who is probably my favorite personality. Alonzo is 36, and he is an insurance adjuster. So these are the next group of next group of sexy singles, as nephew Tommy likes to call them. So it starts off first. It starts off first with Vanessa. So Vanessa comes in. No, wait, y'all. Hold on. I had something to say first. Uh, shout out to the guys from last week's mixer that came into the chat to clear a few things up. Okay. So Will wanted to let us know that Will owns a multi-million dollar real estate development firm. He does not flip homes. He builds them from the ground up across all Dallas, Texas. Okay? My bad, Will. It was just jokes, okay? But Will said don't play on his name. He don't flip houses. Build it from the ground up, okay? Thank you, Will. You might want to go to all the, all the recappers because everybody thought you flipped houses, okay? Next up, we have DeMonte. DeMonte entered the chat to let us know, and I quote, they never showed that was actually my classmate that we've known each other 25 years. That's why I was so open. I don't know what he's talking about with this. Um, he then said they caught the last 10 seconds of a conversation. Oh, by the way, I'm a educator also, fashion stylist slash designer, photographer, videographer, published book author, 
I produced eight sold out fashion shows in Texas. You said seven on the show. So did the did the eighth one come after the show wrapped? But you definitely said seven. He then said, thank you for your opinion. Blessings to you. Check my work before judging. Okay. Um, <laughs> I always forget how the, I always forget how the um, ready to love cast be so ready to throw verbal hands in everybody's comment section every season. And then um, Dominique, shout out to him. He said that, you know, he just said two to ten. Don't have to be ten kids. He also said he wants ten kids just like he wants reparations. He said neither are likely to happen, but it's still a dream. So shout out to Will, DeMonte, and Dominique for coming through and checking out the video. Make sure you gentlemen subscribe if we're going to add in your own commentary, okay? So second mixer. We meet Vanessa first. Um, like I said before, she's the 35 year old flight attendant. She previously dated a white man, but now connects more with people that have revolutionary mindsets. Vanessa gave me, cause Vanessa seemed uncomfortable to me. Vanessa gives me, I dated a white man, but I want people to know that I like black men too. And that's why you joined this particular process. That's the vibe I get. I could be wrong, but that's what I get from her. Um, Alonzo, who's 35, comes in and he wants to show everybody his serious face. He said you can hear him listening to music, making music, skating around, just having a good time. He wants to show that he's serious as well. Patricia, who is a 35-year-old tech recruiter, why doesn't she have a bio? Okay. Um, but Patricia says she relocated to the Fort Worth area because of her job. She's a tech recruiter. So she's looking for a man's man. Layland comes in. She is a 40-year-old cybersecurity consultant. She carries around a list in her purse of all the things she wants in a man, trying to man manifest these good, this good energy, this good juju um, to kind of fall in her lap. I have no problem with that. But one of the items on her list is she wants a man that does not mind washing her hair. Okay, girl, if, okay, okay. Um, we then have Jonathan, who's 36. He is a recycle center owner. But then I heard him say like a mental recycle. So I'm not quite sure what he does. But it's a family business, we find out. He was previously married, and he has one child who he said he loves that kid. I hope so. I, I hope so. Tommy came in strutting and dancing, shucking and jiving. Y'all know how Tommy gets down. Um, tells them, go ahead and meet each other. Uh, mingle around. Y'all will meet the other half of the group tomorrow at the brunch. So Lamar is talking to Rasheen and Vanessa. He asked them if they are spontaneous. They both were like, no, mm -mm, not spontaneous. So his thing is, so we were together and I said, let's go get naked and jump in the pool. You wouldn't. Vanessa was still a very firm no. Rasheen was like, I mean, I guess. Okay, maybe I am spontaneous then. So Lamar then asked them, what would they do if the first date was at a nude beach? Now, Lamar, 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 how? Like, you're too old for this. I feel like the, one of the biggest disconnects that we see on the show, specifically Ready to Love, is they get these older, more mature women that have their life together, that are, like, truly ready, majority, not all, but majority that are truly ready to be in a relationship and then they get men like Lamar that's saying, hey, let's have our first date at a nude beach. Nigga, why? Why? Why Why do you not only think it's appropriate to have a first date at a nude beach, but why would you feel even comfortable enough to say it? What has happened in your past that has emboldened you to ask these women that you don't know if they will want to go to a nude beach? And I get it's hypothetical and he could be you know, just being facetious, but it's like, come on, sir, come on, we, we have to want better for ourselves, okay, we have to, Jesus Christ, so, Vanessa said that it's inappropriate, <laughs> 
in, big inappropriate, which it is. I was with Vanessa. Why would you ask me something like that? She said it's inappropriate. She likes to show up as her best self and be prepared for everything. In her mind, Lamar, you're, it's a chop. It's a chop. You're done. So Jonathan is talking to, I think it was Maya. This episode moved so quickly. It was so fast paced. It was choppy. They didn't put their names up on the screen enough for me. So I think this was Maya. But Jonathan said that he learned how to do a lot of his courting with ladies from watching TV. He said Martin and Fresh Prince. I said, what? Martin didn't court Gina in the least. (laughs) What courting did you learn from Martin? But he said he learned how to court from Martin and Fresh Prince and... Okay, Um, he said he did not have the best self-esteem growing up. So I guess that's where he learned his self-esteem, maybe from Martin and Will's characters. I don't know. But Jonathan is fine, so we're going to let him have a pass. Um, So then we get a lot. You know who he looks like? Jonathan looks like he could be Lance Gross's, like, cousin. He gives Lance Gross vibes to me. He does. So Alonzo and Vanessa, so they're having an extremely awkward conversation where Alonzo was like asking her questions. Vanessa's giving very short one word or quick phrase responses. And then I feel like in the middle of it, she asked somebody, could she get a drink? I guess production. Alonzo was like, you want me to leave? And she was like, no, I mean, but we're not talking. I don't know, Vanessa. I don't know, sis. I like, she just doesn't seem comfortable in the setting. Maybe it's just nerves from being on TV. I don't know. So we then get Rashina. Um, We find out that she's previously married and she's connecting with Chaz. So her and Chaz are talking and she's asking him if he wants kids. He said he, or uh, she's asking him if he wants kids. Why hasn't he had, I think that's how the conversation was going. And he said that, His child should be 20 years old now, but unfortunately, um, the baby didn't make it. He passed away at, I believe he said six months. Um, it was either six weeks or six months. And he said he hasn't found a relationship that had that type of fire and spark, but that's what he's looking for. He wants to have like, he wants that passion that you want in a relationship. So they then play a game called good on paper. And I'm sorry, why is this a different, (laughs) why is this game any different from the last week? Why do they have different titles? It's the same game, Tommy. So this week, the ladies are going to hold up a horseshoe um, as Tommy reads different facts from these guys' dating profiles or whatever their profile was that they sent in, their likes, dislikes, little things about them. It's going to test how well the ladies were paying attention, just like we did last week. So as we're going through this, um, we know that the winner is going to be safe from elimination and Maya ends up being the winner. The ladies listened a whole lot more than the guys because the ladies were kind of neck and neck. They got more right, but Maya is the winner. So Maya is safe from elimination. She really didn't even need to be saved because Maya had, um, a lot of the guys liked her. A lot of the guys liked her. We then get a conversation with Chaz and Vanessa. And they start off with connecting about God. She wants a man that's going to have faith and, you know, be a believer, Christian, everything like she is. So kudos to that. And I feel like a lot of people do not mention God first. I said this in my Married at First Sight review, right? I was baptized and confirmed Lutheran. I had go to a uh, non-denominal church now, but like it is so important to talk about religion. You have to. Otherwise, you end up like married at first sight where you got this agnostic woman with this man that's a Christian or this Catholic woman with this man that's atheist. These are things that have to be talked about and sorted out right away. It's important. So she said that she wants marriage and she wants her partner to kind of like the things that she's into. She lists travel is important to her, integrity, therapy. And he's like, I value all those things as well. So now she done found her somebody. She seemed more relaxed with Chaz than she did, I feel like, with anybody else. 
So we see a little more personality from her now, but not too much. But they talk about sunsets and sunrises and all that good kind of stuff. And they look okay together. They look okay together. So we then get Patricia and Jonathan. And this was the conversation here. So he asked her, how's the dating going for you? And she said that it's kind of hard for her. She hasn't been able, and she knows it's because she has not been able to be vulnerable. She then defaults <laughs> her reason, excuse me. She then defaults her reasoning for not being vulnerable to the men that she's dated, not creating a safe place for her to be vulnerable, right? And that does happen a lot of times. A lot of, there are some people that are just overly vulnerable, right? They can talk about anything. They're willing to share anything with you. Then there are people that are just not as openly vulnerable. And sometimes it takes a little push, i.e. in the form of you creating a safe space for that person. Happens in friendships, relationships, work, um, work, relationships, I guess you would call them, happens across the board, right? So she starts going on and on about this though, like kind of getting into it. And you can tell it was turning Jonathan off because Jonathan was kind of looking at her like you have a guard up. And that's what it seems like. Uh, Patricia probably had a terrible dating life, terrible dating history, probably had a bad relationship or two. And now her guard is completely up. And when you're going into this type of process where it's accelerated, you can't. You can't have your guard up. You have to be able to get at least somewhat vulnerable if you're going to be able to date and deal with all these different men. So we then see a conversation where Lamar is asking Patricia about the threesome. I I want him to go home next week. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. I'm I'm ready for Lamar to go home. Because, like, you're not even being serious. You're there to just kind of fuck, ain't you? Ain't that what it's giving? You came just to try to get your yayas off real quick? Let's not be tacky, sir. You're, you're being crass. You're being crass for no reason. You are just meeting these ladies. Why are you talking about getting naked and and, and threesomes with them? So we get to the guys round table and a lot of the men like Maya and Leyland, we know Jonathan and Leyland connected right away too. So a lot of the men like Maya and Leyland, they do not like Patricia and Vanessa. A lot of the men feel that Patricia has a wall up. She's not as vulnerable. And then a lot of the men feel that with Vanessa, um, there was just no spark. A couple men mentioned that Rasheen kind of felt like uh, a, a homeboy, homegirl type of vibe, but it really came down to Patricia and Vanessa. So they call up, Tommy calls up Patricia, Vanessa, and Rasheen. Why? Why call up Rasheen? She wasn't in the bottom. Nonetheless, he tells her that, you know, the men are still interested in you going back to where you were, like, you didn't need to come up for that. I thought that was unnecessary, but Patricia ultimately gets sent home. And she feels she's in her confessional saying that she did all the work necessary to be there and she's healed enough and Patricia and she starts to cry. She gets emotional. And while I did feel bad for her, you, you're, you, you're not healed though. You're not. And it's evident in that conversation with Jonathan. You're not healed. I mean, she's a pretty girl. I'm sure she'll be able to find somebody. A lot of times these people, when, you know, Black America is watching you on TV, you end up meeting somebody, um, you end up meeting somebody and getting in, you end up, you know, getting involved and you'll find you somebody. She'll make it out on the other side. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Next week, we'll finally get everybody mixing up all together. And that's when the action is really going to start. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.